My name is Chung Feng Tao from the University of Tokyo. Today, I would like to talk about self-enhancing GPS-based authentication using corresponding address. The agenda is introduction, motivation, and contribution. Our proposed approach, experimental reason, discussion, and conclusion. Society 5.0 is a buzzword introduced by Japan in 2016 which is used to refer to a human-centered super-smart city using AI and cutting-edge technologies. Society 5.0 covers many aspects, including fintech, which is used to refer technologies supporting banking and financial services. Let's consider about payment system. This is the payment system history, cash, check, card, electronic payment, and mobile payment. So mobile payment recently is growing as a trend, and the users do not need to bring cash or card, for example, Google Pay or Apple Pay. So current mobile authentication is based on a PIN code, password, biometrics, for example, fingerprinting, iris, face, or multi-factors. However, there are many attacks to the current mobile authentication, for example, PIN or passwords, a password guessing attack in which the attacker use a brute force search or dictionary search to recover the pin code or password. Biometric spoofing, facial spoofing in which the user or the attacker use printed uh, photographs, a digital video or 3D mask. Fingerprinting spoofing, the attacker use artificial relics, for example, gelatin, latex, play doh or silicone. Iris spoofing, the attacker's Use image forging natural individual texture cosmetic contact lens. Smudge attack in which the attacker gets graphical pattern by epidermal oils or smears left on the screen of the user device. And the most common attack is shoulder serving attack in which the attacker look over the shoulder of the victim or even drop in to obtain a sensitive information like a pin or password. And last but not least, not related to attack, a large number of users themselves do not lock their smartphones. So the motivation in this paper is to construct a smarter and more secure mobile authentication, which can be done via smaller, smaller wearable device, for example, smartwatch or RFID chips, rather than a smartphone. And also the system can mitigate the performance and attack and can predict the location that the users are likely going to. And the new approach is to use behavior or habit information for authentication. However, recently there are very few papers focusing on it because the challenge is that how to decide which behavior information can be used for authentication. And a promising solution is to use a GPS information. Friedman et al. says that uh, it is relatively unique for each individual, even for people living in the same area of a city. Also, outside of occasional travel, it doesn't vary significantly from day to day, and human beings are creatures of habits, and in as much as location is a measure of habits. The contribution in this paper, our idea is that the current work, given a GPS data, they only use longitude and latitude as the features for the user classification. And in this work, not only using the longitude and latitude, we also use address which can be extracted from the longitude and latitude using reverse true coding. And the benefit of this idea is that we can obtain extra information from the GPS itself without a need to request any other information from the users. And also, it can improve the accuracy when combining GPS and address. There may be a question is that um, the address is extracted from the GPS. So whether when we combine the GPS and address, it can give us more information rather than the GPS it, uh, itself. In other words, whether the entropy of the GPS and address is larger than the entropy of the address, uh, uh, entropy of the GPS. And our answer is that even though the address is extracted from the GPS, so for machine learning, given two flock numbers, which, which are the longitude and latitude, and the text string, which is the address, they are totally different. And furthermore, of course, GPS can be combined with other factors, for example, uh, Wi-Fi data or web browser log. However, our goal in this paper is to make clear whether the combining 
uh, GPS and address is helpful for better classification. Therefore, we exclude other factors to make the comparison clean. And this is our proposed approach. For the data collection and about the procedures, firstly, we created a smartphone navigation application named Mithra in a project of the University of Tokyo. And the application collects the GPS and work for both Android and iOS smartphones. Finally, the number of users agreed to try our project is VP in a period of over three months about the privacy consents and the agreement is shown to the user during the installation process. And the installation is only done if the user accepts the agreement. And the users can choose to start or stop using the application anytime. Our project was reviewed by the Ethics Review Committee in our university. No personal information like age or name or income is collected, and only an email address is used for the user identity. And this is the distribution of the number of samples. And the final number of samples in total is 14,655. And we can see that the kurtosis and the skewness scores are less than 2. So it indicates that the distribution is acceptable for the normal distribution. For the feature selection, so given a pair of longitude and latitude using a reverse geocoding, coding, we can get a response which usually com contains M a pair of address and corresponding tag, and each tag has four values: rooftop, what is the mode precise address; range interpolated, what is the interpolated address between two precise points like intersection; geometric center, for example, polylight like a street or polygon like a region. And the last one is uh, uh, approximated address. So we only pick up the most precise address in the result because the response may not contain all the tag values. So we consider in the order of rooftop, then range interpolated, and geometric center, and finally approximated address. And then we pick up the first one, which is the most precise address. After having the address, we apply the text mining on them. So given a set of annotex T for each word a W, we compute the term frequency TF, and then we compute the inverse document frequency. So actually, the current count of each word and the inverse document frequency can be used as tag features. However, to downscale ways of the W that may occur in many texts, we compute the term frequency inverse document frequency TF IDF. This is the final step for the feature selection, which is the feature scaling. The feature vector containing latitude, longitude, and all the tag features. However, the longitude range from minus 180 to plus 180, and the latitude range from minus 90 to plus 90, and all the tag features range from 0 to 1. And that's why we need to normalize the features. Actually, there are multiple methods for the feature scaling, for example, min max. Max app robust scaling mean scaling. However, in this paper, we use standard of z-score scaling, which is more commonly used based on the mean and the standard deviation of the training samples. For the training model, so the original solution is to use one class classification in which we only have a single classification and Q label. Each labels. Is each label is corresponding to each user. However, one class classification has low performance and is unscalable. If we have a new user, we have to run the classification again. And that's why we transform to multi-class classification in which each user has a different classifier with binary labels. And the, la and the, the samples of the class are labeled as positive and all the samples which belong to other class will be labeled as negative. More concretely, we use one v-address method. Suppose that we have an n classifier and a sample x is classifier to a label k, and all the classifiers are applied to x and predict k, which has the highest confidence score based on this formula. And the benefit of one v-address is the computational efficiency, scalability, and interpretability. For the machine learning algorithms, we use boosting ensemble algorithm. 
in which the base estimators are built sequentially and used to reduce the bias of its uh, predecessor. And the combined estimator is finally produced as a strongest optimal predictive learner. More concretely, we try two most common algorithms called Adaboost and Gradient Boost. For the validation, our data is imbalanced class A, in which the number of samples range from 66 to 999. And if we apply the normal K4 cross validation, we can uh, have a problem in which a class CK that have all the samples belonging to the test sets and the training set doesn't contain any samples. And that's why the classifier cannot learn about CK. And instead of using the normal K4 cross validation, we use a stratified K4, which can deal with imbalanced data. It splits the data in the train and the test set and returns stratified folds made by preserving the percentage of samples for each class. This is our experimental result. For the environment, we made our program on a machine map pro Intel Core i7 RAM 16. We use a Python to uh, for programming language. We extract address using Google Reverse Geo Coding Service, and for the machine learning, we use a Scikit-Learn uh, library. So we have a different experiment plans based on the number of class varying from 10, 30, and 50, with three approaches, GPS only, address only, and a combination approach between the GPS and address. Two algorithms, Adaboost and Gradient Boost, are applied to each approach. And this table uh, presents the number of classes and the corresponding number of samples, the number of tech features, and the final number of uh, combined features. For the parameter setting, because we use ensemble algorithm, so we set the number of base estimators to 100 and we normalize categorical labels using label encoding technique. And also our data is imbalanced classic, so we use average equal to weighted to compute a precision recording F1 score to avoid a situation that F1 is not between the precision and recall. So for evaluation metrics, we use four metrics accuracy, precision, recall, and F1. And F1 is a better score than accuracy for imbalanced classes. This is the concrete reason. So here is the table. LL means the GPS only, A is the tech mining on the address, and LL8 is the combination approach using the longitude, latitude, and address here. And this table explains the improvement of F1 score between our approach and the approach using the GPS only. And we can see that LLA, which is our approach, outperform the LL approach in all the case. And also, we can see that the magnitude of uh, delta, which is the improvement of F1 score, is increased along with the increase of number of, uh, number of classes, which means that if the number of users is increased, so the gap between our approach and the previous approach is also increased too. This is the analysis about the bias. So there are four graphs, GPS ADA, COM ADA, GPS GRA, and COM GRA, so which, uh, which represent the ADA boost and gradient boost applied to the GPS and the combination approaches. And we can observe that in the beginning, COM ADA, GPS ADA, and COM GRA have a quite high bias However, after a number of estimators, in this experiment, we set the number of estimators to 10, and we can see that the bias of all the graphs become convergent to zero, and this is the line zero. And this is the discussion and conclusion. For the threat model, our target uh, attack is um, the adversary A try to impersonate the auth uh, authentication of authorized user in the system. And at this time, we can only say that the behavior authentication is used as an additional approach to support the conventional uh, authentication. So let's consider an example in which our approach is combined with the pin code based authentication. So the probability for the adversary to break the system is PRA equal to PR get time PR forge in which the PR guess is the probability for the adversary to correctly guess the pin code, and PR forge is the probability for the adversary to fool the classifier. 
and PR forge is the full negative rate, what is the percentage of the identification instances in which the attained, uh, uh, unauthorized users are incorrectly accepted. So we have a PR forge equal to one minus recall. And as I mentioned before, the record equal to of uh, 95.67% and 95.91% for the other boost and gradient, uh, gradient boost algorithm. And we suppose that we get an average, then we have a recall equal to 95.79%. And therefore, uh, PR fault equal to 4.21%. Let's consider about PR guess. Let theta and sigma denote the number of digits in a pin coder and the number of guessing candidates for each pin digit. If the adversary has empty tries before the device is locked with a many wrong pin coder, then we have a PR guess equal to NT over theta uh, sigma uh, power theta. If we combine PR guess with a PR force, then we have a PRA equal to 4.21% times NT over sigma power theta. Most of the smartphone operation system nowadays require six digit for the pin coder, and typically we have a ten digit candidate for uh, each digit from zero to nine. And the user often have a four pin code twice for uh, before the device is locked, and therefore PRA equal to four point twenty one percent times four times ten over uh, minus six, ten minus six, ten power minus six. And we suppose that the pin coder is hacked, then we have a PRA equal to 4.21%, which is still much better than 100% for the adversary to break the system without uh, our approach. And of, of course, we have some assumptions in the threat model. First, the server storing the entire GPS log cannot be accessed or corrupted by the adversary, and also the data is encrypted and transmitted via a secure network, and each smartphone is used by only a unique user. So there are some important assumptions in the threat model. For the conclusion, we have a proposed. Uh, we have a proof that the GPS uh, authentication can improve itself without the need to request user to give other information. We collected fourteen thousand six hundred fifty-five GPS records from fifty users, and also we extract the address from the GPS using a reverse geocoding service. We apply the tech mining on the address, and we compute the term frequency inverse document frequency. We apply the boosting ensemble algorithm at the boost and gradient boost to multi classification. And our experimental results show that our combined approach outperforms the approach using the GPS only. For the future work, first, we plan to select the most important tech features in the address tech mining. Because currently, we extract more than 3,000 features, tech features from 50 class. If we can decide threshold theta, and then we select only the most important tech feature that have a TF IDF larger than uh, theta, and then um, we may increase the accuracy in F1 score. Also, we can try different feature scaling. Currently, we use only the standard scaling, but if we can try other scaling method like a min max or max app min or robust scaling, then we may obtain some additional information. And the last one is changing address languages. Currently, the address is extracted in English. However, in our database, most of the users are in Japan. So if we apply the Japanese text mining on the address, so we may obtain some additional information too. And it's completely uh, completely deep possible because Google reverse geocoding supports multi-languages using including the Japanese. Thank you very much for your attention.